Greetings and welcome to an LGR blurb about some shareware. In these rather odd times that I'm recording this, uh, I could use a distraction. I don't know about you, <laughs> as I'm sort of holed up here at home, uh, as you probably should be if you are at all able. Just stay home, stay safe, stay clean, and, you know, like what everybody's saying these days. But anyway, weird times. I just want to talk about something that's a little comforting and uh, reminds me of simpler days. I've got a box here of shareware, as it is so crudely written there. Yeah, this is a collection of shareware releases from Software Evolution, a shareware distributor from Canada back in the day. You might have seen this hanging around in the background of some other random videos. Um, just <laughs> I've got a lot of boxes like these just full of shareware distributors, like catalogs of stuff. I used to, actually, I still collect these whenever I can. I used to be able to find them a lot more often. But uh, yeah, this one I've had for a while, and it's just filled with all sorts of cool releases from them. In fact, probably I would be able to see, you know, Postmark 2009 is when this was shipped to me. So yeah, been hanging around. And I've just been meaning to take a look at it on video in some form, but I didn't really know how to do it. And why not a blurb, you know? Weird crap's going on. Let's talk about shareware. <laughs> in case you're not familiar, uh, with the concept of shareware, it's pretty much like a, a trial version or a demo version, you know, but often, uh, at least the way Apogee did it and many others uh, followed suit, was that they would give you like a portion of the game, usually a significant chunk, like a whole first episode or in the case of Keen Dreams here, this is just the whole game. But uh, yeah, it was free to distribute, to share, where, and usually, you know, you just download it from like a bulletin board service or AOL or whatever websites, early internet, if you had that. Um, but if not, like me, then you would go to a store or a computer convention or any number of things where you'd be able to find these. You know, some grocery stores, man, you'd find these at checkout lines sometimes, just stacked up near the registers, on pegboards, hanging around, whatever. And yeah, it was just like a little, a little release and a little sleeve usually, or a plastic or a cardboard package. And yeah, it's a shareware game. You know, a episode or an incomplete game or, like I said, pretty much full game that they would just ask you to pay for later on. Or sometimes these are just freeware, like Commander Keen Dreams here. This is a weird thing. I've talked about this in the past on LGR a couple times where this was like released through Soft Disk, like a Big Blue Disk, I believe, their magazine release thing. And then it ended up in sort of the public domain, but not really. Yeah, it was a weird thing. Also got sold at retail, but... Shareware in particular was one of those where it was supposed to be free to distribute. So why were companies like these selling them is a question that I get anytime that I talk about like uh, a shareware release, uh, either on my LGR Twitter or in a video or something, and it's just like, they were free, why were companies selling shareware? Well, it wasn't free to make the packaging or write the discs, so they were allowed under most of the license agreements for shareware to put together their own little releases like this, package them up and sell them, usually for anywhere between two and maybe six or seven dollars, depending on how many discs were included. And this is just one of many, many, many companies that did it back then. And like I said, this one was in Canada. And uh, I thought that was interesting because this is a, a set of releases I'd never seen before here in the US. Uh, I've got a lot of other collections of shareware like this from so many other distributors like pretty much complete collections. Uh, now you just can't find these anymore. I don't know, it just either they all got bought up or nobody thinks anybody wants them or something on eBay, uh, whatever. Kijiji and Shop Goodwill, I found them all kinds of places. Craigslist, man. So uh, yeah, let's just look at these one by one. Uh, these mostly don't have very cool artwork. A lot of the others, uh, the different shareware vendors and whatnot, they would put their own unique art on the front of these. These seem to be just a mixture of like uh, logos and screenshots, and that's about it. But uh, let me set the camera up here a little bit better. And we'll just look at what is included on each of them. Right, so this is a game that I have never played. Sky Bomber! I actually don't know what this is at all. Superb graphics and digitized sound though. <laughs> I mean... They pretty much all say that. They're not going to say, well, there's, it's pretty okay, you know, graphically. But anyway, 
never played this. If you have, let me know. In fact, if you want to see me check out any of these in maybe a future video or something, just going through some of the most interesting ones that I've never played or you've never seen or just want to see again, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I, I love this stuff. Sky Bomber. And here's another one. Brutal Challenge. The Brutal Challenge. I believe this is a Pause of Fury or whatever it's called. Something not too familiar with this. I've played... If that's if if it's Pause of Fury, I believe that's what it's called, Brutal Pause of Fury, something like that. Then uh, yeah, I've definitely played it, but not the like shareware version. Anyway, not a particularly great game from what I recall, but <laughs> whatever. Oh, here's something speaking of not particularly great games. Scunny Lost in Space. Oh my word. Special Agent for Hire. Yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes the titles that they put on these aren't necessarily the individual title of the episode or the title of the release, you know, they just sort of make something up to make it look like they're selling something different. I'm actually just noticing the prices here, too. It looks like five Canadian dollars per release for the most part. So that's a thing. Also like the checked for known viruses on the back of all these. <laughs> it's I mean, it was a genuine concern, man. You'd sometimes go into these uh, places that sold shareware and they would actually have viruses written on the disc. You'd be buying it in the store and you just didn't realize it because sometimes you get boot sector viruses or other weird things. And yeah, uh, people just didn't think about computer viruses for a long time. And in the early 90s, it was very much on people's minds with some of the more iconic viruses coming out there. Um, oh man, what was it the I love you thing? And I don't know, some other stuff. Uh, but uh, Kill Blaster, this is one, another, 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 uh, Another classic that many, many people have probably played. Encounter superb airbrushed graphic backgrounds. <laughs> Again, some of the things they pick up to talk about with each release is just like, okay. I mean, sure, it's got that. That's not the main draw, I didn't think, but okay. Okay, here's one that I have never played. I, uh, what is this? True Blood by George Kinney, maybe? The Carthanian Ultimatum is not to be ignored. No idea what this is. It kind of looks like a flight game or something. Huh. I have no idea what that is. And that's one reason I love getting these compilations. Uh, a lot of times you'd end up getting, in later years, all of these on a single CD. I like those compilations as well, but it's really neat to have the individual releases here because then you get like a, you know, a shareware package for Mystic Towers here, um, a classic little isometric action adventure uh, distributed by all sorts of different shareware companies, but uh, I think the main publisher, at least here in the US, was Apogee. I'm not too familiar with this one. I've, I've barely played Mystic Towers, but it's definitely one that I'm aware of. I've always found the, uh, the graphics kind of interesting. Look like it should be an Atari ST or an Amiga or something. Tubular Worlds. Again, not familiar with this one at all. A spectacular super VGA package with digital graphics and ad lib and whatever. You know, they all say that. Wave after wave of colorful enemies to teach you their version of good manners. Looks like a shooter. I don't know. I'm intrigued. Uh, ooh, here we go. Now, this one is kind of weird. I don't know why they're releasing this because this was a full retail game by Microprose. A full shareware version. I guess it got a shareware release. I. I've never experienced a shareware version of F-15 Strike Eagle 3, but here it is. A demo flight over Desert Storm. See, this is probably more like just a demo, if I had to guess. A lot of times with retail games, you'd get the demo or the trial version or something, and then shareware was like a totally different distribution model, and a lot of shareware vendors just released these anyway, because they're like, eh, it's close enough. It's a free-to-distribute thing, so they did it. Uh, whatever. Here we go. Here's another one that I have barely played, but I'm aware of it just because MVP software. Uh, Three-point basketball. Check this out. It's actually pretty interesting because of the uh, the graphics engine that's being used. I believe it's the same one as Corncob 3D. I'm not entirely sure if it uses the Pie in the Sky engine or not. I know MVP software made heavy use of that engine, but anyway, it's a it's a fascinating release in terms of like shareware sports games. You don't see too many of those. And, uh, well, this is this is one of them. Now, of course, Commander Keen and Keen Dreams. The Lost episode, as it was, rather, it was uh, rather often called. It was never really lost. Uh, <laughs> it was just, you know, 
uh, something I've talked about many times before in LGRs. One of those things that was put out totally separately, just because of like a, a licensing thing or like an agreement going on between id Software. They they had to uh, hold up to, to their end of their contract and it got released pretty much for free. And then later on there was like a retail one. Just a weird game. It's sort of an in-between in terms of the engine and gameplay of like uh, episode three of Keen and then uh, episodes four and five, the Goodbye Galaxy games. Uses closer to the Goodbye Galaxy engine, but it's still not quite there. You can't like grab on ledges and stuff. It's just weird. I recommend it though. Highway Hunter. Here's another one that I remember seeing all over the place back in the day, but genuinely never played it. Like ever. Epic Mega Games presents Highway Hunter. Safari Software. Ooh, dang. So they did some cool stuff. They also did, um, oh, that was the top-down helicopter one, I believe. Seek and Destroy? I want to say that they also did that. This kind of looks like a top-down thing as well. Uh, I don't know. Always wanted to try this out, but I just never did. One of those shareware Epic Mega Games things that I always wanted by seeing it in the, the MS-DOS like catalogs. You'd see all the Epic Mega Games shareware releases, and this was listed. Never got to play it. Oh, here's here's one reason that I wanted to grab this particular uh, set of games <laughs> back when I did 10, 11 years ago. Scotty Kart on a disc. That is, is just weird, man. Basically wacky wheels. And what the heck? They put the screenshot upside down. <laughs> well, it may be scanned for known viruses, but it wasn't scanned for basic image layout and design. The most fantastic racing game out there. Oh my word. With ad lib and sound blaster musical soundtrack. You know what? Uh, it's not the worst. I have an odd fondness for this just because the whole wacky wheels uh, thing. But it's a scunny game. You know it's not going to be the best anything. And what is this thumb? It looks like a weird... Oh, it just looks weird. All right. Oh, Creepers. Oh, man. So this is a Lemmings-like game. Uh, I barely played this. I remember checking it out back in my uh, early, early, before LGR days. I was really getting back into Abandonware and being like, whoa, there's Lemmings, but it's not. Guy, your arming of cutesy caterpillars and pupa to pupa pots and into butterflies. In the spirit of the Lemmings game. Well, at least they're honest about it. Yeah. It's Lemmings, but kind of not. Uh, you do get to go to some hellish, like, landscapes and stuff. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, Lemmings goes to hell, too. Why not? It's, it's something about, like, super cutesy things and just send them to hell, I guess. Ah, oh, Goblins 2. Oh, there's no... Yeah, you know, there's extra eyes there. There's only one eye here. Uh, adventure game of sorts puzzle thing from, um, dang it, what's their name? Those guys, Cocktail Vision. I have the full version of this that was uh, published by Sierra over here. What is this? Goblin Series 1, 2, and 3 or some of the most hilarious and delightful packages. Packages on the market today. Right. I'm guessing this is some kind of a demo or something. Didn't think there was a shareware release. Who knows? All right. Ah, uh, yes. MiG-29-2 Fighter Combat. <laughs> yeah. The fabulous air combat simulator MiG-29-2. Why are they sticking all the letters together? Oh, dear. This is another one of those where it was like a commercial like retail game, and somehow there's like a demo or shareware release ne that I've never tried. Like, I know the full game, but weird, man. Megapede. This is another one of those those games. What is this? Don't miss out. Don't miss out on what? It looks like a sticker, but it's not. They just like stuck things on top of the logo and just weirdly... Anyway, yeah, this is one of those that I think I picked up on like AOL games or something and promptly forgot about it. Where has this game been hiding? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> one of the most graphically excellent games. Ooh, that's being generous. Notice that they don't show any screenshots. None. Just says, in place of the screenshots, one of the most enjoyable and addictive games on the market. Mm, maybe it's better than I remember, but I don't remember it being particularly great. It, it's one of those things where uh, it's got that weird, like, early rendering of graphical 3D things done in, like, a 
VGA color palette. <laughs> I love these shareware things. Oh man, absolute classic right here. We got Monster Bash, part one. Mm-hmm. Good old Johnny Dash going around saving pets and stuff and throwing rocks at things. Wonderful game. I have covered the full version of this on LGR. And yeah, this is a shareware classic that seems like every other computer in the world had at some point. Um, yeah, just just a, it's a good little platformer. Cutesy, but kind of gory at the same time. It's it's just fascinating. The absolute best from Apogee. I don't know about that, but it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Here we go. Another one that I was happy to have in some form like this because uh, this got a full version eventually, but uh, I don't... Well, no, it was kind of sold at retail at one point. Um, I believe by being in software. But yeah, Ken's Labyrinth. A predecessor in uh, to, to his, like, build engine things. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Spirit of Doom and Wolf 3D. It's an FPS of sorts. You're just going through trying to save your dog. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a labyrinthine kind of thing. Superb, with two exclamation points. I suppose... That's just cool. I don't know why they chose this, this particular screenshot. There are so many more colorful and vibrant levels to pick from. Uh, but anyway. Ah, Body Blows. This is one that I genuinely have never played. It looks like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, not like a side-scrolling brawler or something. Beat your opponent senseless. That sounds good. Martial arts spectacular. That sounds good, too. Never played it, though. Just, just never, never got around to it. So yeah, body blows. Again, just with these terrible fonts. Oh man, they're all so terrible. And that's why it's wonderful. Ah, another Apogee. Platforming classic Bio Menace using the same basic engine as Goodbye Galaxy, I think, or Keen Dreams or something. It's, it's in that, you know, uh, id software lineage of, uh, of those engines, but... Yeah, side-scrolling platformer. Honestly, pretty darn good. Um, yeah, just, it's just a good game. Uh, really tough, especially I remember like just exponentially being more tough on episode two. But you know, it is one of those things that it's just awesome. Kind of reminds me of Dangerous Dave just a little bit. I mean, I, again, it's all well, it was a Haunted Mansion. Some of those they're all sort of around that same time, using a similar code base underneath. Recommended though, in many ways. I've been meaning to cover the full version of that for ever. Uh, the Phantom Returns. Return of the Phantom. Don't really know why this got a quote unquote shareware release either. This is another one of those retail games, uh, fully commercial released things, and I want to say Microprose did that too, so. I don't know, man. Demo or something. Play yeah, playable shareware demo of the registered version. And it's just a demo. It's probably just a little bit of the game or something. Strange. But cool, though. Just weird to see it. And again, they went with a different title. Instead of Return of the Phantom, they went with The Phantom Returns. Like, just call it what it is. Uh, Robocod. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, another one that I was surprised to see in like a shareware vendor distributor from on uh, you know the PC. This is more famous as an Amiga game. This is the second one of these, right? I haven't played them very. In fact, this is the only one that I've played. I've been meaning to cover it as like a Christmas thing because it's kind of a Christmas game in a way. It's definitely wintry, but yeah, it's a, a solid platformer, man. Really interesting mechanics in terms of being able to like expand your dude, your Robocod, uh, such as he is and get up to higher platformers and make weird jumps and stuff. It's just a cool, charming game. Never played the PC version, though. I've only ever played it on the Amiga. I have the PC one, like, full version boxed somewhere. Or maybe that is the Amiga one. I don't remember which one I have. But yeah, they just call it Robocod, as opposed to James Pond 2. Whatever. Looks better on the front of the case, I suppose. Oh, here's one. <laughs> this is another one that I wanted to... Oh, I just went out of my way trying to find. In fact, I think this is what drew me to this box of goodies in the first place all these years ago. I was looking for some copy of Executioners. Because this is just, yeah, bloody, gory, and loads of fun. Indeed. 
it is that. Uh, they don't show any screenshots in the back. I don't blame them. It's a very nasty looking game. <laughs> Extremely graphic fighting game. Yeah, it is that. Um, whoa, what was it Bloodlust Software or something? They made all sorts of different gory games, all sorts of things. In fact, they also moved on to like making some of the first and definitely most famous emulators for MS-DOS, like Nesticle and Genesis. Yeah, that's why you have like a bloody hand cursor in those. But yeah, they did bloody games as well. It's just it's sort of an infamous, well-known, old-school, gross DOS game. <laughs> it's rather off-putting, to be honest, but it's oddly alluring because of that. Sin 2. Sin 2. Oh, virtual fighting at its best. Don't know this one whatsoever. But, man, those graphics. It looks like... Was it Rise of the Robots, almost? Ooh, boy. Play in awe as the Outworld's ultimate warriors compete in the most incredible graphic-filled virtual combat world ever. Well then. Looks like a thing that I would want to try, again, with some of these oddly chosen screenshots. Like, what the heck is this? What is this? I can't tell. They chose it anyway. It's so strange. Did nobody put any effort into any of these? That's what I just wonder. So many of these shareware distributors just at the bottom of the barrel in terms of the, the design of the packaging. It's so bad. No graphic designers on the team whatsoever, I assume. If they were, they... Oh, all right. We're Risky Woods. Yeah, you know, have I played this? I don't know if I have. I certainly know the title in terms of, like, Okay, shareware package from Electronic Arts, maker of the Bard's Tale. Okay, so I'm definitely I've never played this. What is this? Yeah, Electronic Arts. They did not release shareware that I know of. The ultimate for all you AD&D gamers out there. Well, I'm highly intrigued by this. Again, I don't, I don't think I've ever played it. I've always heard of it, but this is not what I was thinking it was. It looks more like, uh... Oh, man. I don't know. Gods or Rastan or something. It's cool to me, though. I don't know what about the, what that uh, Electronic Arts thinks about, because as far as I know, they've never released any shareware. Another one demo version thing, maybe. Uh, this is just an absolute shareware classic, and I love the fact that it says Halloween Harry still. In fact, I believe by the time it got renamed to Alien Carnage, they just didn't. Uh, release the shareware under that name anymore. Maybe they did. I've never seen one of these that says Alien Carnage instead of Halloween Harry. I've only got like, retail ones that say that. Um, yeah. Lovely game. <laughs> well, at least in my memory. I don't know. It's, it's not like the best platformer ever, but I, I like the, the jetpack mechanics and flying around, killing zombies, and like setting dudes on fire, and like blowing things up with micro-missiles and all that. Uh, yeah. Just one of those games that holds a weird special place in my brain and my heart because of all the memories that I had playing the this right here, the shareware version back in the day. Did not play the other episodes nearly as much because I didn't get them until adulthood. I played through it once when I reviewed it. That was it. But that shareware episode, the, the office episode, just going through the different, like, yeah, offices and workplaces, lovely. Uh, yeah, another absolute shareware classic with some intriguingly chosen screenshots and images. Like, what in the world? Jazz Jackrabbit, Bunny with an Attitude, and a very big gun. In yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> They've chosen, like, the hardest difficulty uh, icon, or, you know, the, the little graphic right there from the difficulty selector. This is from the intro cutscene, and then you have these pre-release, like, beta version screenshots here. Uh, I actually, no, this, this is just badly colored. This is a beta screenshot, though. I don't know if I can focus. You can see that Jazz there has a totally different sprite. He actually got redesigned partway in through development. And so they've chosen... Yeah, it's on the back too. These are pre-release screenshots. Now, I've never actually seen a playable version of the game with those uh, sprites in the game. But yeah, some, some shareware distributors... <laughs> Jazz Rabbit! <laughs> Oh, one of the greatest games ever created. This bunny on steroids is ticked as evil forces have captured his beloved Eli... Okay, we pretty much got all that right. I mean, just odd choices, though, again, in the design of this packaging. And I love any and all Jazz Jackrabbit share releases. Got a couple more here. 
Trekkie's Delight. This looks like a compilation of various things. So there's like the classic uh, Star Trek like mainframe game right there. Actually, it looks like that might be a little bit... I don't know what that is. Space War. That's like the arcade... Uh, it's not really related to Star Trek. Uh, well, it kind of had Star Trek-y sprites in the Space War arcade game, so maybe they're just sticking them all together. Whatever. Ultimate package for all Trek fans everywhere. Does not say what the individual games are, but that looks like, you know, just a basic recreation of the arcade. And this looks like a kind of one of the many, many recreations. This could be EGA Trek. I've not played that too much. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know, but that was a shareware classic that was everywhere. Indeed, uh, it's Trekky stuff. And finally, the last thing, we've got some cool Croc Twins. Never played this one either. Challenging arcade action at its best. Yeah. Don't know much of anything to say about this, because never played it. Looks like an Amiga game, though. Or, or something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's one reason that I wanted to pick this up. I'm remembering now, all these years ago, because there were so many things in here that I was just not familiar with at all in terms of shareware releases that I totally missed out on here. You know, unless it was, well, any of the number of shareware games that I've already covered on LGR, I, uh, yeah, I just, I didn't get to play a lot of these back then because for the most part, we was, uh, I was just relying on whatever I found in the local stores. So it was a lot of uh, Epic and Apogee software things. And then a bunch of these others, like, uh, maybe I've seen them, but I've just, I've never gotten around to playing them. So yeah, that's, a, that's all this is. I just wanted to show that these exist, what's inside this box, and uh, give you a little bit of a dist distraction blah, 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 on this crazy, crazy weekend. And I'm probably going to have a lot of crazy weekends, as are we all, uh, coming up <laughs> in the near future. So anyway, if you'd like to see some of these played... You just, you know, seeing them for the first time myself or revisiting some that, I don't know, man, I, I want to go through every single one of these if I get the time. But yeah, let me know the ones that you're most curious about or ones you remember yourself or just anything. Just share some stuff. This video is going off for almost 30 minutes. Dag on it. All right. This is a really long blurb. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching.